Welcome to English football! Armstrong taking it down, Armstrong gets his shot in, and he scored as well! And Alan Armstrong has scored on his debut! Think of the impact that those three had that came in in February with Marco coming in, was a wonderful player. Robbo just out of the blue just decided not not just to go for one striker, but like I think he went for like two or three different strikers, you know, like Alan Armstrong and Marco Branca. Come in and he said he wanted to sign us to score the goals, help him get promoted. Never mentioned any other strikers that he was signing. How Robbo was able to pick two from, from those five, um, you know, I didn't envy him. And, you know, I basically went from, from being you know, uh, starting with uh, alongside Mersen uh, and then to suddenly being on the bench. Uh, Gianluca Festa said to me, Marco, what do you think about the ball? We would like to have you here because we need a striker. Uh, and I remember I, I said, why not? And Middlesbrough, like Nottingham Forest, have bounced back at the first attempt. We'd go and go and, and wear teams down. We'd, they'd put up with it and they'd, they'd cope with it for so long. But to do it for 90 plus minutes against a team that we had who could open doors or who could do something, really tough to keep your concentration for that long. Um, and not a lot of teams could do it. Uh, everything was running fantastically well between me and Merson. Uh, you know, we, 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 we really, really liked playing uh, together. We understood each other. Uh, both of us could play. Uh, we had good movement, uh, you know, we were good finishers. To get the cup finals, people talk about the final, but what about the games that have to get you there? And the games that you think you're not going to be, you know, you're not, you're not going to be good enough for the teams that you beat to get there. And I think that was a wonderful effort again from us that season, which again consolidated us for the league. I think people think that it takes away from your, from your league form sometimes because it's extra games, but I think it can build your confidence. Reading were a funny team that, that season because I think we went down there in the cup as well. Um, and we scored a, a latish one down there. I'd, I'd scored, Neil Madison took a quick free kick. Paul Merson brought it down out of the sky and they just waited for me to make a run, played me in and passed it into the net. We won one nil. I think that got us to the semis against Liverpool. But then afterwards, the, the bus left me. So I was doing media duties. <laughs> And I get a phone call off Robbie Musto. He said, Higgs, where are you? I said, well, I'm at Elm Park. It was Elm Park then. He said, well, uh, we're on the bus. They were going to get a flight, so we flew down. He said, well, we're, we're near the airport now, so you'll have to make your own way back. Didn't get, that was it. So I had no one from the club say, oh, how are you going to get... Anyway, Ali and Bernie Slaven were there, so I ended up having six hours in a car with Bernie and Ali. I can remember playing right back at Liverpool, get the goal, Higgy put a ball over the top to Merce and we score. And here's Andy Townsend, Beck wants it, but Andy Townsend held it up because he thought that Beck was going to be onside, but here's a great run by Merson. here's a great chance for Middlesbrough now, and it's a terrific goal! And then they come back and win 2-1, but... I told me I came in at half time and I knew my hamstring had sort of gone. But I never set out and I, I had this magic cream called DP and I used and I smothered me hammy. Seriously, I used to do it all the time. I smothered me hammy with DP and me, me hammy was burning. And it was just 
I just had this mental sort of thing that if I could feel the burn, but I couldn't feel the hammy sort of thing, you know. So I played the next game. The next day I woke up and I had a bleed. I, my, my wife said, Have you, you look like you've got stockings on because I had a bleed all the way down the back of my leg. You know, all the way down to my ankle, the bleed had gone down my leg and it looked like I'd had a black line painted on me back of my leg. So, yeah, I had, a, I, I had a tear, but I was out for a few weeks after that. Mind. But I just, you know, when you're playing at Anfield and you want to you wanna do well and there's, there's a game that you don't want to come off. I, I, how I got through that game, I'll never know in all my life. When you compare the two sides, I mean, they, Liverpool had a lot of people who, you know, they were my idols, you know, Steve McManaman, John Barnes in particular, and Robbie Fowler and all these players. And you look now, Jamie Carragher was playing and yeah, I think it was one of his first games. Um, so they had a lot of, of quality. And I think in the first game in particular, Steve Baker had done an unbelievable job on Steve McManaman. I think he went to Anfield and he, he, it was one of the few times we changed the way we played. And Brian told Steve just to stay on Steve McManaman and he did all game. Steve McManaman, um, he barely had an influence. Bakes was, was fantastic. I have the pleasure uh, to, to, to come here. So when my teammates in Inter Milan, uh, Gianluca Festa, said to me, Marco, what do you think about Borro? We would like to have you here because we need a striker. Uh, and I remember I, I said, why not? Uh, because uh, I always love uh, the English football, but uh, first of all, the atmosphere, the respect. So uh, I came in uh, Middlesbrough enthusiastic. Uh, Marco, Marco was, was a great player and with a very good experience, you know, played in the big teams. And he helped a lot to, you know, to achieve the, uh, the results, the final results. I think that comes down to the gaffer, you know, having, having the, the belief or having the strength or being able to talk the club and to bring that sort of quality player. But I remember Marco Branca um, coming and um, I've got a soft spot for Marco Branca because I just think he was a wonderful finisher. He was unbelievable, he was the best best man. He'd come in and he's gay, he's fat and he's, he's hat and he'd come in and he'd go to work. Um, but whatever way he got the ball in the net, sometimes it wasn't clean, sometimes it was a bobbler, sometimes it could be anything, but it always went in. The first match versus Liverpool. Yeah, versus Liverpool. The centre defender was Gallagher, I think, no? I, I remember I have a son somewhere he is uh... <laughs> I think that was Marco Branca's first game it was his debut he scored after I don't know how long it wasn't long but uh, of course the one against Liverpool was a special one because they were they were a big team in the Premier League we were in the second division basically we should have no chance of, of beating them um, we got we got a, a, a good result away from home and then then we, you know we played at home I think it was one of the first games of, uh, of Marco Branca uh, if it wasn't the first, actually, I think he scored with his first uh, touch. Yeah? But before that, uh, what I remember of that game was uh, the, the, the run uh, I had uh, for, 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 the, for the penalty. Because uh, basically it was me uh, who, who, uh, who provoked the penalty that, uh, that Merson ended up scoring. But the, the game at home, like Branca scoring, it was just, ah, what an... You know, what an atmosphere and, and, and what an unbelievable experience. I think Paul Merson uh, is a good player. So uh, he has uh, uh, 50, 60 metres uh, lunch, uh, special movement uh, about me. And I think after four or five minutes, I scored for the team. Great atmosphere because uh, after the match, uh, the people stay in the stadium. Uh, we are we we are in the in the dressing room, and uh, after 20 minutes, uh, we have to go outside uh, again. 
because, because the people was very happy. When it beat in Liverpool over two legs, I thought it was a phenomenal feat. You know, sometimes you beat a team of that calibre on a one-off game, but to beat them over two legs with the quality of players in the semi-final, and this place was rocking that night. I mean, absolutely rocking. It was a fantastic uh, achievement, fantastic day, and uh, something that shouldn't be possible, but uh, we made it possible. Just to beat Liverpool in the semi-final, for me, even as a fan, you know, beat them in the quarters, beat them in the semis, it's just a really good feeling because it's not often that you can go and, and beat a team like that from when you're from the championship, especially in a big game like semi-final of a cup. So that's definitely one of the highlights for me. Carragher and Middlesbrough are back at Wembley. They've reached their third successive domestic cup final. And for Brian Robson and his team, it'll be a reunion with their FA Cup final opponents last May, Chelsea. Well, I mean, I mean, me personally, there were certain things I didn't, I, I didn't uh, agree with Robbo about uh, that season. You know, like I mean, me and Merson, we had a fantastic striking pair, and and uh, up until uh, Christmas, we were just flying. Uh, I can't remember whether I had 13 or 14 goals, and he had like uh, more or less the same uh, number of goals. And then uh, Robbo just out of the blue just decided not not just to go for one striker, but like I think he went for like two or three different strikers. You know, like Alan Armstrong and Marco Branca. I, I I felt that was that was unnecessary. Um, uh, he could have brought maybe one in, you know, uh, but but to, to, but to bring so many in and and you know I basically went from from being you know uh, starting with alongside Merson for, uh, and then to suddenly being on the bench. It was a, it was really surreal because it was a Friday night. I remember it really well. I was at Stockport and we were playing Stoke the following day. But I was humming and hawing because I'd already spoke to Southampton and I'd agreed a deal with Southampton. I was going and the club were busy sorting the payment terms out, how they were going to recoup their money. And then I get a phone call out the blue saying that Millsra were interested. I rang my agent, he found out and then straight away he said, Mildred, I've put the bid in and that, that was me done. I, I'll be honest. I was still at the ground at the time. I was still at Edgeley Park. It must have been four o'clock in the afternoon because I thought I was going to Southampton and Dave Jones was the manager at the time who manages at Stockport. But then I got that phone call and I'm not being funny. Once I got that phone call, I went straight in the office. I went, the manager, Gary Megson, the manager at the time, still there, I went in. Knocked on his door and I said, Gaffer, look, I've just been told the Millsborough put the bid in and I'm, I want to go. Doesn't matter what, I'm going to Millsborough. So I'm not bothered what kind of money they're offering. I'm, I'm going. And he said, look, it's, it's not finalised yet, but I can totally understand. Got in, packed the house up. I had the wife, <laughs> the missus, and the two kids at the time there. Packed everything as much as we could in the car, drove up. I don't think we'll ever come back. <laughs> we'll never come back until we moved that day. Because I knew I was signing. As soon as, as soon as I heard that Brian Robson was interested in Millsborough, as I say, the, the people that they had, the players that they had, I wasn't bothered what I was getting. It, was, it, it didn't really bother me. It was coming to, I wanted to be part of the, let's say, the promotion campaign. And luckily it happened well. I, I just couldn't believe it. Because when you, when you look at 14 uh, after six months, then you would say, and I, and I don't, I, I, I couldn't see why it shouldn't have continued. So, so you would you would look at between 25 and 30 goals at the end of the season. What, why, why would that not be enough for Robbo? You know, I, I never really, I, I never understood it, uh, uh, and that's probably one of my, my biggest uh, disappointments because, uh, you know, um, uh, it was such a good season and it just suddenly just turned strange. You know, you know when you're going well, and you've got someone who's scoring goals, as in Paul Mason was, Michael Beck who's scoring goals. And then you bring in them three, Alan Armstrong, who'd scored goals for Stockport, good striker, um, Hamilton Rickard, and obviously Marco Branca from Inter Milan. It's, uh, you know that the club's desperate to get up and it'll do everything they can. Again, I think the club did well to give us the impetus. Imagine that, you know, now on any team in the championship. I think Borough have done it a couple of times recently where you bring your three strikers in around January. February and it just gives you that extra push. Come in and he said he wanted to sign us to score the goals, help him get promoted. Never mentioned any other strikers that he was signing. So then all of a sudden, uh, seeing he signed Margot Branca, then Hamilton record and already had Higgy who had done well, Becky, Merson, 
yeah, never going to play. I, I thought I'd left the team that I was doing well with at Stockport, and I was probably the main striker there, scoring the goals, top goal scorer. And then you just think, will I play? But I see, I, I got my chance, and when I did, I, I took it, and it worked out really well for us in the end. When Al came, he just set off and started scoring goals. Brank are the same. You know, Rick Hard as well. When he when we got there, you know, he was just. He was an absolute beast. <laughs> he was unbelievable. He was so strong. And but you know, they integrated with the group really well. You know, the foreign boys, Branker came in, as I said, Hamill came in and they just fitted into the group really well. They all found their feet really quickly. Like I say, Marco scored in his debut. I think Alan scored really early. Um and, and Hamilton was a, a proper handful who couldn't really speak English but was a handful and you could see what Hamilton was going to be. We always felt we'd, we'd score enough goals to, to get up. But like I say, signing those three, I think, was the clincher in the end. Merson fancies having a run. Still Merson, and he found Townsend, and Brank has got a chance. And Brank has scores. Middlesbrough sweeping forward, Brank has run his man. It's still Brank going. Brank Taking it down, well, Armstrong gets his shot in, and he scored as well. And Alan Armstrong has scored on his debut. Oh, it's the right week to make your debut for Middlesbrough. It was an unbelievable debut for me, to be honest. Obviously, being a Newcastle fan, and then starting in Newcastle, and then coming on and making your debut against Sunderland was, was something special. And to top it off with the goal, it was. Let's say it was a live long in the memory that one for me to score on your debut in front of the fans and. Any strike, I'll tell you, when you go to a new club, you, if you score nice and early, it gives you that massive lift and that confidence. And let's see, if it wasn't for a couple of niggles I had, I think I would have probably scored a few more goals. If you're thinking about Michael Bryant, you're thinking about Liverpool and you're thinking about the Sunderland game, aren't you? You know, and when you look at his finishes against Sunderland, it was real quality. And I think that's what gets you up. So I think that I'm not disrespecting Sunderland, but we had some quality that in those games you come to the fore. So for me, that was, um, that was another great win. That was my first sending off for a lot of my whole career. Was it Lee Bradbury, I think, who got hit the floor like a you know, ton of bricks? Everyone was putting bets on uh, for us to win 6-0. And, and I just think the final whistle um, was quite emotional, as I said to you, because at the start of that season, I was so hurt. And, Six games to go, Brian Robson called me into his office. He said, go on holiday for two weeks. Go on holiday, recharge your batteries, get ready for the playoffs. And I was like, no, we've still got a chance. We've got a chance. He put the cross for me for the bicycle. No, very nice guy.